Yours is because you're a lot quieter than ours. Anthony, yours always spikes because you have so much treble. Like yours, I have to bring down so much. And then bass, I have to bring down yours. Perfect. <laughs> is that what it's from? I'm not using yeah. that. Well, <laughs> here comes trouble from the office. Well, I know that. It's I know here, where here comes about. trouble from. <laughs> Listen, we can we can worry about names after. Okay, that's what we can do. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the F Word Podcast, episode 98. For all y'all that's paying attention, that's two more episodes until our inevitable demise. And by demise, I mean hiatus. Uh, I'm your host, G. With me is Vast Anthony. And you've heard his name on the podcast. You've heard him mentioned. He even had an episode named after him. Jesse. How's welcome. it going, guys? I'm glad to be here. Hopefully we got some okay. interesting topics. That's all we have time for you, Jesse. Thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next time. <laughs> you know what, Anthony? That's it. No PS5 for you. Oh, oh, the PS5. Blacklisted. Blacklisted. The reason that that makes sense is because Anthony and Jesse are friends. Jesse also holds the keys to our local video game shop, our local EB Games. Mm-hmm. And so uh, what he says goes. <laughs> Actually, I, I would like this to continue on. So Anthony, like, there's just a montage of every time Anthony goes to the store, like, he just gets pushed away. And, like, he keeps, <laughs> he keeps trying to come back with, like, different outfits and stuff to try to get in, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Matt Damon. He's our Matt Damon to the Kimmel show. <laughs> oh, yeah, like when Ben Affleck the one time brought him in under his trench coat. Yep. It's going to work. Yeah. Don't worry. I'll go in a day when Jesse's not there. No, I'm going to let take everyone know, and they're going to stop you. Oh, yeah. They're gonna put up a. They'll put up your face along the walls. <laughs> like, don't let this guy in. I'll let the security guards know. They'll just kick you out as soon as you come in. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm gonna walk in. They're like, "Hey, don't you do that!" I'm gonna walk right past them. Yeah, see? Uh, I tried my best. So, um, yeah, we got a full house. So I'm hoping that uh, I've never had this many people on that one shot before. Don't say it. Okay. I don't hear you guys snickering. Damn it. Um. So, first what I want to do, because Jesse wasn't able to come last week, because originally you were supposed to, and that's yeah. why it ended up being a two-person episode, and then this week, it's a super overloaded episode, um, is that you, last week you gave us the topic of hyped up or big movies, TV shows, video games that a lot of people like, but we don't. Now, first, we're going to kick it off with you giving us your hyped up or big movies slash TV shows that a lot of people like that you don't, and Vast, because neither of you were here last week, and mm-hmm. because it was your question, Jesse... Um, we'll go for it. But first, Vass, you say yours, and we'll leave the best for last, which is Jesse, because it is his question, so it can give him some more time. So, Vass, what are yours? Uh, movie, for sure, I would say Gravity. That was a big piece of garbage, in my opinion, and it won an Oscar <laughs> and all this shit, and I'm like, so boring, so stupid, like, wasted my time. Uh, yeah, I did not like it one bit, and for all the hype it got, I just couldn't believe it. So you're saying gravity uh, just didn't hold up the weight? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you, haven't, like, you haven't been very punny. Like, we used to started this thing with you having a pun almost every episode. Oh, what the fuck was I going to do for the pun? I did the treble joke. That was pretty punny. Uh, that was off mic, so nobody knows that happened. I'm pretty sure it was on mic. I, don't, I didn't press uh, record yet, but we'll see. I'll have to do the playback and see. Okay, so Vass, that was uh, gravity. Any other ones? Oh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to give one for each talk, like TV show. Uh, which one? Which one? Which one? True Blood, actually. I heard so many people talk about True Blood. Oh, it's so good, so good, whatever. Started watching it. Garbage. Didn't care for it. Didn't you get into Vampire Diaries for a I time? I sure did, and that is a oh, fantastic, <laughs> historically accurate <laughs> TV series. If you're looking for something of, with a little bit of fantasy and a little bit of history, Definitely the Vampire Diaries is the way to go. And then two spinoffs came of it, you know? It's were they good spinoffs? Actually, yes, they were. Oh, okay. The one spinoff was better than the original. So it was Vampire Diaries, the originals, which I found a little better than that one. And then there's now Legacies, which is meh. Teeny, yeah, teeny drama shit that it's like you can kind of get past. There's a, there's a decent story there. <laughs> 
no vampire, no vampire diaries of a wimpy kid. Say that again. No vampire diaries of a wimpy kid. No. You guys might no, be too old for that one. Yes, probably. Uh, uh, maybe I know of Wimpy Kid and Diary oh, Wimpy yeah, Kid, okay. So. Sorry, That's, you kind of mumbled. Best. Now what you mean? Yeah, no, no, nothing like that. Anyways, yeah, I would say that. Okay. I can't okay. think of a okay. game that's like right. super hype, but yeah. All right, Jesse, what do you have for us? Go for it. You have the floor. Okay, I'm gonna start with a big heavy hitter, and Anthony's gonna hate me for this. I've been trying to play it. I cannot. I hate it. Mario Odyssey. I fucking hate <laughs> you. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I think it's overhyped. I've been trying to play it. I play my Switch 100% handheld mode. The only thing that screws me over is that it's a lot of motion controls, and the controllers okay, I use fair. aren't motion controlled. So no, honestly, yeah, I cannot get into it. It's so bad. I don't know. There's so many better, cheaper options to play than Mario Odyssey. I don't know why people go with that. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Anthony, but it's not the best Nintendo main title game I've ever played. It, it's really bad. Look, here's the thing. If you're saying handheld, I love how that like, was the first one. It wasn't even waiting for the buildup. It was just like right out of the gate, just pops you right in the nose. I just wanted to rip the band-aid off. <laughs> like I tried playing it handheld too, and I could not do it. So I understand. But like I'm not even that mad about it because like his his point is valid. Handheld, the game fucking sucks. But I played it docked because that's yeah, like how I only play handheld, yeah. so it sucks. Uh. Also, another one that I've talked about this list out with work, like uh, with my people at work, uh, Bethesda games. Any of them, we j- I really cannot get into them. So, like, rather you talk about Fallout, Skyrim, Doom. I think they Ooh. are just overhyped, and they always have problems when they launch, which I don't know how for being such a big game company. Like, Skyrim was breaking a few consoles. Don't get me started on Fallout 76. Doom <laughs> was received really okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> Every, yeah, that's why it went on sale like a week after it was released. It was. I ca- yeah, it was bad. But for TV shows, honestly, Tiger King. That annoyed me so much, that show. Ooh. I was expecting a murder mystery of some sort with Carol Baskin's husband, and it was literally one episode. I'm like, yeah, that's 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 she killed him. Documentary, though. Yeah, that'll come in untold. Story <laughs> yeah, and she killed him. <laughs> but the thing they're yeah. like man like, you gotta I, I have this. you know really i'm surprised just... they let that happen because that would have opened up the gate on another investigation like someone looking at that documentary being like hmm maybe we put this to bed too soon let's go well i think they yeah. did open another investigation like currently i don't think it was ever closed okay. i think it was just a cold case and now they're starting mm. to get more like tips like, on like, it and they're getting more facts mm. in their Netflix show. They're like, oh shit, we missed a lot. But the whole point, everyone told me that show was about like this girl that killed her husband. And I'm like, man, I can't wait to see this. And it was literally one episode. I'm like, hey, maybe there's more. No, it was just Joe running around being an idiot. Whoever like, told really, you that, like, see, that's really the problem. Whoever you. told you, it was, <laughs> yeah, whoever told you that, they lied so hard. But because I mean, it's literally just called Tiger King. So. For me, it's like, oh, I guess it was, I guess, about the Tiger King, but he wasn't really a king. He was more of, like, a Wizard of Oz type, like, behind the curtains, and everyone just thought it was weird. Hmm. Interesting. So we've got Mario Odyssey on the handheld and and Tiger King. Any movies? And Oh, sorry, Bethesda as well. Any movies? No, there's no movies that I really thought were overhyped. I mean, I also go into movies, though, just... Not as a critic, critic, just to like see how it was. Because I know you weren't a big fan of Captain Marvel, but I thought it was okay. And a lot of people are kind of mm-hmm. crapping on it at work. They're just like, it's going to be so bad, or it was bad. And I don't know. I just take it with my own opinion. I haven't really watched too many bad movies. It's pretty much just games and stuff that I find are really bad. Lots more. Are you super into. critical of games because of the work you are at? Uh, pretty much. Well, I get, I tell people, I get paid to, like, promote these games and everything, but there's certain games that if someone's looking at, I, in my heart, I cannot push them towards getting them. You told me about, like, one of those, like, what was the game you're, you told me a story where you even told the person, like, this is a bad game, like, don't buy the game. Like, what was, do you remember what game that was? No, I don't. I think it was a recent one, too, but. Well, I remember you, um. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I remember you had talked so far of getting the 4k ps4 or whatever to one that was like 
If you don't have a 4K TV, you don't need to spend the extra money, which I thought was very much appreciated. Yeah, because it was also, like, I don't think the pros meant for a lot of people, unless you're going into that kind of stuff where, like, you do have one of the best TVs or you're going into VR. Otherwise, you don't really need that kind of stuff, which people don't realize. They just want it because it's expensive. Because <laughs> I tell That's people, fair. like, I have, I have the first model of PlayStation, like, the original model. Mine's perfectly fine. Yes, it sounds like a jet engine sometimes, but it still runs perfectly fine and plays everything fine. Apparently, The Last of Us. Two yeah, I had mine up until so just fucking blasting with their engines going loud. But people also don't clean their Seriously? PlayStations enough. So, <laughs> like, I was it was literally like right before we started recording, I saw a tweet about somebody saying uh, it was going so loud it like sparked the breaker, and their entire house like and their entire house's power went off just because of like how loud the PS4 was going, and it just yeah overpowered. That's interesting. Crazy. That's very interesting. See, I haven't had that issue um, for sure, um, and I've been playing it pretty hard recently, especially like the last couple of days. But it hasn't gotten to that point. Um, which I guess is, goes into my other topic, which is uh, just a quick little Last of Us Two uh, thing. So I haven't finished it yet. So I don't know, uh, Jesse, have you played slash finished it? Oh, I haven't got it, but so many people come in and spoil it for me. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm just beyond. Okay, so don't spoil it for me. Like, I, I no, don't I know won't, how far I am at. Yeah, I don't know how far I'm at, but like, I've I'm enjoying the game. I really, really liked. Like, I loved the first half of it, and maybe, and I don't even know how far I'm at. So I don't usually know if I was like a third, a half, or whatever. And I'm starting to see where some people had mentioned, because there was a guy on my Instagram that was like, hey, how do you like it or whatever? And I'm like, I think the storytelling is beautiful. I think everything's really great. But I was, I didn't realize how early in the game I was. And then he messaged me back and he's like, well, that's interesting. He's like, because the storytelling is what a lot of people were having issues with. And I'm at the point now where I can see where some people might have an issue. And so I feel like I'm getting close. However, I still think it's a, really really good game and i think it's super complicated and i've stayed away from i have been and i am staying away from all reviews um i think the closest thing that happened was one thumbnail it didn't necessarily spoil it but it was just a scene i hadn't seen before and then i just shut off the the i shut instagram off for a while or whatever um but i don't know why I, I don't understand why people seem to hate it so much. Then again, I haven't seen these reviews to see what they actually hate about it. I can just see that there's a there's a storytelling aspect, and it's less it's less of an aspect and more of a structure for me. That's just like okay, well, if people have issues with this part, then I can kind of see it. But I don't know if anyone, no one's played it yet, and if you're sitting there wondering if you should or shouldn't, I would say play it because it's very complex and it's it's scary how relatable it is to now like it's really scary and to the point where i'm like oh things are actually just going to get worse and this is going to happen and so if anybody wants a real look at what the future could look like and maybe how not to be i would definitely go that route and it like it's uh yes quite a complex story so that's uh that's my next thing of just bringing up Last of Us 2. And mostly because there's gameplay footage of Last of Us 2 streaming over top of this right now. And by streaming, I mean just playing. Um, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, is announced. That's the name of the game. Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of you guys played Crash at all. Uh, I play a little bit of it, but not enough to be like super excited about it. I might pick up the trilogy collection for the Switch, but like I'm not that crazy about it. Vast. I'm pretty much in the same boat. I don't Jesse's think we, boat, we ever played Crash that much. I think it was more of like a banjo, <laughs> banjo kazooie. Oh yeah. man, banjo kazooie. Crash, Crash was like too much like Sonic, I think, and that's kind of why it was like you choose one or the other a little bit. I don't Interesting. Know. I did play Crash a couple times, but not at our place. Like it was always at a friend's house. Yeah, yeah. So like. Same with, like, Parappa the Rapper. We never had the first original Sony. That's so, right. like, whenever we'd go to Athens Place, we'd play yeah. Parappa the Rapper, which is a game that I feel needs to come out <laughs> so bad right now. It's so good. Um, but, yeah, so I just thought it was cool. And it was especially cool because I finished playing 
or before I started Last of Us 2, I, I had mentioned this last week, I finished playing Uncharted 4. And in Uncharted 4, you play Crash, like the original Crash Bandicoot, like mm-hmm. a game within the game, which I thought was was uh, interesting. Um, before Jesse got on, we talked about the Avengers game presentation. Uh, Anthony, you said you, you only saw the trailer, correct? Yes. Jesse, did you watch the presentation slash trailer? Uh, I watched the trailers. I have not seen any of the gameplay for it. It looked okay. interesting. And Bass, the you were... Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Bass. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I watched the gameplay. Uh, just recently, I didn't watch uh, the presentation. I'm not sure if the presentation revealed anything more. But from what I just saw, the gameplay, even just like kind of skipping ahead, lots of Thor content for sure. It seems like they went heavy on that. Um, and rightfully so, that's probably going to be their most, if not second to most interesting character play. I think it'll be a tie between them and him and Iron Man just because of the flight options and that kind of thing and like just mm. way more stuff. Um, but honestly, it looked pretty good. Like the different game modes, uh, you can do customizations, which is huge. Like even for Iron Man, like the types of emitters and all that jazz. Like I think that's pretty pretty cool that they they went that far into it and almost needed to but i mean it was cool to see it um and it'll definitely be a fun game to play regardless so uh jesse were you excited about this at all when you heard it through the eb sphere uh i was excited just because it's uh local multiplayer so like you can actually have i believe it's up to four people sitting at one tv playing it which normally doesn't happen with games a lot of everything's just like online multiplayer Mm -hmm. So if you actually get people in one place playing a game, I think it's really good. And especially one on PS4 and Xbox, they don't really have very much that are like that. Right. The only thing I don't like about is that, it is... So when you say local... Like couch play. Oh, sorry, I was just going to... Right, okay, yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't like about it is the sorry, collector's edition. the one thing you didn't like about it? It's just the collector's edition. Mm-hmm. I saw photos of it, and it looks kind of cheap, even though the price tag's like, I think it was 200 mm. It, this stuff wow. in it just looked cheap, and that's my only gripe. Well, yeah, and then this, the Captain America statue, the bobblehead, the Hulk bobblehead, I think looks really cheap. What's a and bobblehead? The only... I thought it was an actual statue. No, the Hulk ones is bobblehead. Captain America is a statue. Okay. And then like the metal edition, I think that's only like ten bucks more, but it's literally just pants and cosmetics. And I'm like, do I really want to pay like ten or so Perfect. dollars more just for some cosmetics? Oh, it's 270 Canadian. Fuck. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's... Some people that's ask me if I want it. Mm-mm. I'm not getting collector's edition for sure. What... Yeah, I usually don't get them. I think, Vast, you got the Odyssey one, but you got a pretty cool statue with, with it, right? Honestly, the out of... It, Assassin's Creed has done pretty good with, like, their their quality of what they offer with their big packs. Um, and I, And I think it's... It's kind of worth it, kind of not. I think it's come down to the person, like how invested you are. Like, and I mean, I wish I kind of started earlier with the AC, like special edition stuff. Then I'd have all of the collectors. And so, like this Marvel one, kind of gives you. It's always going to be compared to something like Assassin's Creed because they do offer quite a bit. So I don't know. I haven't. I haven't really researched the deluxe editions, but it sounds like Jess is saying it's not worth the money that you get. It's not like it's too much extra content. It's not like you get anything physical that's kind of a one-off or special edition or whatever that's really worth it. So, you know. Again, I'm not going to knock someone if they get it. Everyone's entitled to getting whatever copy of the game they want. Oh. But I don't, to me, it's not worth the money. But if, if you guys are excited about pants or something for a game, <laughs> yeah. I, I won't knock hey, you for getting some pants. There's sparkly pants, Jesse. <laughs> see that's what bothers me about it is that like so it's in-app purchases yes you're going to be paying for it like and i'm i i do not like in-app purchases i think um and i was and i was saying this before we live in a post witcher world witcher 3 that gave you a full game plus 10 hours of like two five-hour dlcs that were better stories than most games that you pay 70 dollars for and you didn't have to pay for them. They just came with it. And we live in a post Spider-Man PS4 world where you unlock the suits in the game, unless you obviously got the Silver Sable DLC. But most of the suits and the good ones were not behind any type of paywall. You were able to earn them. And so when I saw that, I was just like, oh, come on. Like, just 
release the game, make the challenges super hard, but shouldn't have to pay for a pair of pants for customizing, especially in a game that, quite frankly, like even though we've always talked to Marvel and we're always big into Marvel games, like or Marvel movies and stuff, like there's nothing overwhelmingly special about this game. Yeah, and I it agree. just feels to me like they could have just given the suits just like Spider-Man, because Spider-Man, a lot of hype, and it deserved all the hype it got. And they gave you all those damn suits. I don't know. That's that's for that's where my thing is. But I also, you know, I'm not one of the people that develops these games. So my view on the game. Um, mm, oh, I haven't talked. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So quickly, uh, just overall, I think I watched the trailer, and I honestly do not give it. Like, I'll probably buy the game just because I want. It looks like a fun game to play, but I don't think it'll be like spider-man which was a fun game to play and it was a really good game to play like i think this is just gonna be kind of it's gonna be fun to play with your friends and that's basically it like the story really looks shitty i'm not gonna lie to you like it kind of looks like a fucking knockoff civil war except you're not fighting superheroes but like they still have that like superheroes are dangerous you know somebody else in the shadows set up this whole plot for the superheroes to fall and it's like okay that's cool but you know like you're in the Marvel universe. There's literally so many stories you could have told about the Avengers in a game setting that would have been way better, but they decided to go with a story we had heard four years ago in Civil War. Uh, if they don't have Spider-Man, like in a way, there, there are uh, rumors about Spider-Man, like from the PS4, crossing over into the game, which I think would be huge, especially with a mm-hmm. spinoff for Miles Morales, because then we'll actually finally have you know a shared game universe which i don't think there are any other game universes that are kind of like in the same scale so i think it has potential but i honestly don't think it's going to be a very like good story driven game from what i've seen so far that's interesting see i don't mind i'm actually intrigued with the story because it's they not that they broke up it's because like they got sabotaged by somebody, which is kind of like the Zemo thing where he's tra- he sabotaged them at going after each other, but they didn't go after each other. I'm actually interested in the fact that they brought AIM in with MODOK. And I'm not the like a huge MODOK fan. I just think that's a really cool way to introduce a lot of cool video game elements. So you have AIM, which you haven't introduced yet in the movies, which is a big part of the world. And then you've got a broken up, you know, crew. And they pulled some of the elements from um comics i was watching the the live stream and some of them they were pulling from like actual random comics throughout like the suits and stuff and in the trailer they showed thor like volunteering or something um but you know it's not i don't know how compelling it is i am i am intrigued by the fact that troy baker and nolan north are involved in it like those guys are voice actors that if they're in something there's a reason for them to be in it. They must be into it. And so like they, these guys even took a very, very small role in God of war as Magni and Modi, you know, and they are outstanding voice actors. So that's one part that gets me excited and they're voicing Tony Stark and Bruce Banner. So that's where my hype lies. Um, Cyberpunk. Anybody see the cyberpunk shit? I did. I did not. Uh, Jesse, any word on Cyberpunk? Uh, nothing really. Just got pushed back to November instead of September. A lot of people are getting hyped yep. for it. I, d- me personally, I don't get hyped for games just because I've been let down so many times recently. So I kind of take it. I've been trying to take it slow with it. I liked what I saw in the trailer because for some reason I thought it was gonna be third person. So it being first person is actually pretty dope in the trailers. So it got me a bit more excited mm-hmm. than what I was. Vass? Um, we kind of talked about it on the side. I actually think it could be a contender for game of the year once it gets out. I think there's just a lot of uh, a lot of components to it that I think players are going to really like about it. The feel is amazing. Um, I just think the world that they created with it and like how the story is going to unfold, I think it's going to be up there. Definitely a contender for that. Um, I don't know. I think it's going to be pretty sweet. Antoine, so I'm not a big. I I don't think I'll buy the games because as like stated before, for single player games, I almost always hate them when they're in first person, and it's not to like 
to say that they're bad. It's just, I don't know. Personally, I get motion sick very easily when I play first person games. And single player mm. games is that usually when that kicks in the most. Because if it's first person, just because there's a lot more exploring you need to do, like I'm constantly looking all over the place to like see where I'm going and stuff like that. I think it'll easily get game of the year. Like I know the two big contenders for game of the year would be Last of Us Two and then Cyberpunk. And even though Last of Us Two does have great reviews so far from critics, I think Cyberpunk is going to be loved by fans and critics, which is kind of what the last of us two isn't doing right now Mm -hmm. so i think easily it'll get game of the year it looks really good like i'm not gonna knock it it looks really great it's just not something i see myself getting into yeah the last of us point where it's kind of a mixed bag with fans versus critics is interesting um and the critic thing is actually interesting because there's this youtuber i've been recently following and i think she's pretty outstanding like i've been really enjoying her videos and she used to work at IGN. Her name's Alana Pierce, I believe. Where is it? It's like watched a bunch of videos. Yeah, Alana Pierce. Lana. And she's she's really like I don't know. She's just a really smart. It looks like a smart person that l- r- like talks about stuff in a very just like a person. Like, and by that I mean like it doesn't sound like she's paid by anybody. She's not swayed by anybody. And I think in this time, like especially with so many people watching their asses like it's very you can really tell who's just following a narrative or uh, or who's towing the line and who's actually having their own opinion and so she's i mean and she's got over three hundred thousand followers so they're like she's got a huge following but like she's just i don't know one of those people that when it's one of those people you can watch her stuff and just say oh yeah this is your opinion nobody else is telling it to you and so she was talking briefly about how the critics rating certain games 10 out of 10 aren't necessarily that they're 10 out of 10 games. There's a lot of stuff that's influenced in their reviews. Vote is bought almost. A lot of the times, yeah. And she started talking about Last of Us, so I kind of stopped watching the video because I didn't know if she was going to spoil it. She simply just said it wasn't a 10 out of 10 game for her. She never really gave her score, but the whole point was just kind of talking about how the whole culture around game critiques and reviews are. Um, which is why I'm glad as of like, I think last year I just stopped, even though we talk about it and we kind of review games on our own, right? But it's games that we've played, right? Yeah. Which I think is super important, um, which is where I like where Jesse was mentioning, like you don't get too hyped for games. You just play them and then you can get excited for them. That's fair. Um, but uh, no, cyber uh, in terms of cyberpunk, how it is, uh, what I saw, I saw the whole stream, loved it. That game is going to be sweet. And I'm not a big first-person shooter person either. I did really like Dishonored. Um, obviously, it's not like Dishonored, but it's almost like it's... I think I mentioned it on uh, Jimmy Cunos's page. I was like, it feels like it's eight different video game styles in one game. Mm-hmm. Like, it's got RPG, first-person. It's got open-world, kind of like a, th- uh, um, a uh, third-person RPG. It's got so many different elements to it and i just think they're gonna crush it and i'm a huge fan of cd project red so that's definitely one of those games that like day one purchase for me for sure and i like that you can play it on the ps5 too Mm -hmm. which is gonna be nice um i think ghost of tsushima might also be a contender for game of the year by the way i actually forgot about that one yeah yeah i could see that one is that coming out july you said july right yeah yeah. Jesse, do you know the exact date? <laughs> I should. I don't off the top of my head. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I think it's like the 19th or something. That might be. Like, I haven't picked up a game. I can't even remember the last game I bought. Or I guess it was right before quarantine when I bought Captain Toad from you, Jesse. But yeah. uh, yeah, I'll probably, I think Ghost will be one I'll be picking up because that just looks really fun and just. Oh, it looks so good. Yeah. I, I mean, I was going to play it. I was going to pick it up, and I think I put in. Uh, the day it got announced last year, I went in and I put a pre-order down right away because I was like, oh, this is going to be amazing. Like, I, I don't know. Some, I've been relatively lucky where I haven't picked up too many games that I just right off the bat thought looked really good that ended up being garbage. Like, some of them have been as good, but so far, it's like, no, this this looks like it's going to be good, and, and I haven't been too, too disappointed. 
Um, but I think that one's going to be a contender. It could be a race of Cyberpunk, Ghosts, Last of Us 2, and I don't know what else. What else could be potentials? I'm not sure if there are any, like, really big games coming out for the rest of the year that are, you know, like, super story-driven games that I'm aware of right now. Final Fantasy, yeah, possibly. Know. Final Fantasy VII well, Remaster. When's that coming out? That one was released during the, like, two-month hiatus for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So it hasn't got too much hype, but from whatever I heard people playing it, they're really liking it so far. I think it also hit that weird window, though, when everything closed and all the games oh, yeah. kind of, like, slid under the rug. I think you told me, like, it was when you guys were about to reopen or something like it was in that weird, like, window where there weren't any game stores that were really open when it came out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no game stores. I don't think we have any here besides us. Yeah, I don't think the one... Right. Yeah, Walmart, and there's a used game store. I think it's still around. That was off of 7th Avenue by Value Village. No, Replay Replay got closed. It got closed. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Damn. So many of these places are going to be closed now. It's going to be nuts. I don't know. All the ones in Saskatoon were still open when I went. Yeah? Yeah. So that's why I was surprised about it. it was like the little shops that had all the, like the old used games and a bunch of weird new ones were still open. So, hmm. I think maybe the demographic has something to do with it because Saskatoon's generally younger than we are here. Yeah. By a substantial, well, not a substantial amount, but by I would say if you took the average age, their average age is probably like thirty nine. Ours is feels like it's. 48, 49, 50 maybe sometimes because we're like it feels like we're just an older population here. Yeah. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention something. It's super funny. It's actually not funny in one way, but it's hilarious in another way. So, and and the fact that okay, so the guys, the people behind Marvel, the game, yeah. actually issued an apology for showing the footage of Captain America statue. Because apparently they said we heard the fan base that was offended by them showing a clip of their video game with a Captain America statue because everyone's deciding to tear down statues now. Yes. And they actually issued an apology. Loser. Which I thought you guys are the biggest cucks I have, I have, have seen, I've heard of. Like, you fucking idiots. This is like, you're going to let a bunch of random people that are yelling at you over the internet dictate what you're going to do and you have to apologize for it? So my thing is... Idiots. It's a game. Why the fuck are people getting mad? Like, I get it. You know, some of these statues are getting taken down or getting taken down for a reason. What did Captain America do to deserve this hatred of not having a statue? I'll tell you why. In a game. I'll tell you exactly what it is. The the filter that people are using to funnel information through, or I guess to, the filter they're using to filter information through, that's probably better, is so small, and all it is is statue, white person, America, take it down, because mm-hmm. it's racist. Every, like, there's so many people funneling, filtering everything through a racist filter, which is the irony of it all, that any time they see anything resembling it, they're like five-year-olds. It's like, oh, this is a square. That's a square. I'm just going to put this square in there. It's fucking unreal without even actually looking at what the context of anything is. They're just right away. That's why it's a big deal, Anthony. That's why. And it's so stupid. But what's even more stupid is the fact that these big companies, massive big companies, are actually playing along. You know what I mean? Like that's the that's the funny thing about it. Because if and if someone wants a statue taken down, then that's fine. If they didn't like that they saw the cat the Captain America statue, that's fine. Let them cry on the internet and let them get their group of fucking piece of shit people that are just going to complain about everything because they're. Just all they're going to see is, oh, statue, white person, take it down because it's racist. Because that's, again, all they see. Then that's fine. Let them do that. But it doesn't mean that you have to be a cuck about it and issue an apology. Like, that's fucking stupid. And the only thing it does is it just helps 
the, it helps the cause of the people crying about every little thing they find. That's what's that's what my concern is, is that it's just going to get worse because they're going to be like, oh, this worked. Oh, and this worked and this worked. And we can just complain about every single thing because all we see is racist everywhere. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a great way to live. Hmm. I think Thanos. Anyways, I thought I'd bring that up. Uh, He wasn't wrong in so much, so many senses. Like it's his snap literally like, I don't know whose phone is that? Sorry, that was mine. Come on, man. Really? What is this? Your first day on the job? My bad. No one messages me usually. Jesus. God damn it. Odd flex. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I just thought it was. I thought it was just like the the silliest thing. It's just so so silly, and it's getting sillier. That's the other issue, is that it's just gonna get just way way worse. And I don't think I'm like playing The Last of Us two right now. Like I said, it's just super eerie, and I see shit like that. I was like, oh, we're actually gonna get super shitty. And what's ironic is like 10, 20 years down the road, there's going to be a generation that comes up that's going to be super hypercritical about us, mm-hmm. like of our generation, and just like probably worse than the way that they're being hypercritical about everything right now. And I saw a video by Andrew Schultz, who I think is just hilarious. And he's like, you better hope, or I'm paraphrasing here, but something along the lines of, you should hope that the generation that's coming is nicer to you than you are being to the generation that's passed. Mm -hmm. You know, like sitting there and chastising people that have actually lived much harder lives than most of the people that are bitching right now and making it seem like they're the best generation without having done much of anything. So that's true. Anyways, I'm going to like and, and again, even for me, like I'm, I'm hoping that my friend's kids don't sit there years from now and look at our history book and criticize us nearly as much with the same amount of um, venom. I'll put it that way, because I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure that when the shoe, the, the 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 turntables have turned, as mm. Michael Scott would say um, on them, they wouldn't like they wouldn't like being treated the way that the, by like a lot of other people are like how they're treating other people. And that's the, that's the sad irony of the whole thing on, on every single dimension of all of this BS and stuff like this, like Marvel deciding to issue an apology is one of the biggest, uh, the biggest reasons why that's like, you're letting it happen. Basically. You're, you're actually allowing it to happen. Well, I don't anyways, know, man, like Marvel is such a PC company now with, all their apologies and all it's just i don't like it's nothing no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say this the fact that they apologized for that is stupid there was stupid. literally nothing to apologize for nope not at all not at all because again you have to you have like we have to be hyper aware of the people that we interact with and what type of filter they use with the information that they're given and if they're using that type that could really put a lot of people in a really tough situation, which is why I'm still on my journey of just getting rid of all of it. If it's on YouTube, I'm getting rid of it, not getting involved, not speaking out, not doing anything about anything except on here. But we only have like two and a half episodes left. So hmm. fuck it. Uh, speaking of fuck it, Ashraf Ismail creative director of Assassin's Creed Valhalla had to step down due to a personal matter which is infidelity and I he, I mean he cheated on his wife that's pretty much it and the, and the girl that he was seeing uh, reportedly thought and I don't know Jesse if you know any of this information but the girl he was seeing didn't know that he was married I don't know how that's possible in this day and age like just look at look him up on the internet I'm pretty sure you can find lots of information that he's married I think I'm on his uh, it's a picture of him with a woman, but I'm not sure. Anyways, but he stepped down because the allegations are out. And what's funny is that these range from um, adultery, which that's true, or impropriety or just, you know, just cheating on his wife and not being a good husband at all to uh, allegations uh, sexual harassment, abuse of power, um, every every single thing. So, 
it's really all over the place. He got hit with the big ass list. He got hit with the he got hit with the Me Too list. He got hit with the and now what's funny is that every single person in the industry because there's it's not just him. He's the only one that's gotten down for infidelity. But I don't know where the abuse of power is because people are talking about are using abuse of power, and I've still been trying to find the actual reason, so I can't fully fully say. But like, when did just cheating on your wife turn into abuse of power? Like, I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, they're me tooing everybody. Like I said again, it's like a, it's like coronavirus is having a second run, like run through soon, or it will. And now me too is having a second wind in the gaming industry. Well, Gentlemen, anybody natural. want to jump off? I just I don't know. Per, like I, there's not much I we talked about this time and time again earlier on, but it's just how it is. The me too is it's good when it's used correctly. But it's also so many times it's just used to stir fake bullshit. Mm-hmm. Vass, anything there? No. No, nothing much to add to that. I agree. Well, kind of a little much sometimes, especially when it comes to non-fictional worlds that have no effect on the real world. I think that's silly. It's all the well, the thing silly. is, it's not. Well, it's not a non-fictional thing. It's the fact that like this guy, they're saying like Ashraf had used his power. Mm-hmm. to cheat but i don't know where the like the words that they're using are like yeah but you don't have any proof that any of this was even done it's just sounds like a guy went behind his girl his wife's back and kids and was cheating on her and that's it yeah. i don't know where the abuse of power came in but i'm still like there's five different reports right in front of me right now that all say something different and you have to go through all of them and then try to figure out what what it is it just sounds like a dude did a super super shitty thing mm-hmm Jesse, any on that? Any? Did you hear anything in on no, your I, side? Yeah, I heard it. The only thing I'm thinking of abuse of power is like, because she said she didn't. He, she didn't know he was married. So unless he was, unless she was lying, and he was like, "Do you know who I am? Like I'm this big guy, Ubisoft. And, you know, you should just do what I say, no matter what." But there's no reports really saying that. He just straight up just cheated on his wife. So I don't know. I agree with you. I don't know where the abuse of power really is coming in, but. Yeah, I mean, if she worked at Ubisoft and like he said, you have like you have to date, but then she would know that they were married. Like I, the thing is, when you have when you abuse of power, there has to be some transfer of power to somebody. Like that would mean that this this girl, let's say, if she ended up working at Ubisoft and she didn't get a job or promotion or whatever because of him, that's an abuse of power. Yeah, like that's that's. That's I, I don't know. It seems like the definition of an abuse of power, but just a, like if she never worked at Ubisoft at all, then there's no power to be had, and so it's just it's, it's just him. Situation. Yeah, well, no, it, it for me it's pretty cut and dry. <laughs> he just did a piece of shit thing. He somehow convinced this girl that he wasn't uh, married for two years. Apparently, that was the one thing I saw, but again, not really fully confirmed, and. I don't even know if she worked at Ubisoft or you worked and, or or maybe, you know, uh, he held the key to a recommendation that could have gotten her a really good job somewhere. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting um, because of how many are coming out now. And my other question is, well, my concern is that everybody's just going to be painted with like a rape brush, which is super shitty because there's actually people that have been raped and they're being overshadowed by somebody that maybe felt uncomfortable, which also isn't great. And maybe somebody like nothing even happened to somebody, but they just felt a certain way. And they're trying to like, I don't know, in in my world, I believe that uh, somebody being raped or actually sexually assaulted is supersedes a lot of other things. Right. But that's just me. I could be totally wrong. And someone could be like, no, it's all the same thing, which is, I believe it's super unfair, but that's the, that's the time we live in. I guess, but on the Assassin's Creed side of stuff, my guess is the game's pretty much almost done, though. So they're just well, not going to have the this game. Year, it should yeah. be pretty much done. It's coming out in November, oh, so yeah. really everything now is just going to be like bug fixes. And my guess is he's had somebody there that's like obviously been just as much in charge as he was. So I don't know. I just thought it was. I thought it was interesting. If this happened like a year ago, then I'd be like, oh, this game's toast. Hmm. But, 
Um, what else is there? Yeah, I just thought it was interesting because because of this, like a lot of people in that industry are, you know. Actually, I had something these. pretty cool happen to me a couple of days ago. Go for it. So it wasn't anything crazy, crazy, but I saw on Instagram Live, I was just working on something, and it says Rotten Tomatoes was doing a Q&A with Joel McHale, who plays Jeff Wenger on Community. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Or played. So I hopped in there, and they only answered two of the questions during the live stream, but I was one of the questions uh, he answered. So it was pretty Oh, no hype. way. Yeah. I was pretty excited. I recorded it too, because I was so happy. I'm like, no way. What's it was the a question. It was what was your favorite moment from the filming of Community? And this is a mm-hmm. the F word special special cut here. He said it was uh, waiting because apparently he didn't know what the dean would dress up as every time. Okay. So it was just like waiting to see him come in, and that was his favorite <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh, wow. That's good. That's a good question too. It seems so simple, but it's like it's one of those, it's uh, one of those questions that I feel is like, yeah, like that's it's what way better than what's the best part about filming? Yeah, like it seems like so. It, it seems like a more down to earth. I'm just going to ask you a question, type of question when you just say like, what was your favorite part? And that's cool. I like that. How uh, um, was it a long Q and A? It was like a twenty minute Q and A, I think. Like they talked about other projects he's doing because apparently, like he's in this oh, indie we horror him? movie coming out, and oh, all the oh. questions, like, in, it was basically just a community like filled fucking comment section. But like, it was oh, all we really lost basic you there stuff. for a second, by the way. Sorry, yeah, no, it was just uh, so the interview was for some an indie movie that was coming out, and mm-hmm. basically he was just talking about that, and that I didn't really give a shit about what he was, you know, working on because. Everybody who loves, you know, Joel McHale is either there for his comedy acts or for fucking community. A majority are there from community. And I was. I've been watching community, or I first watched it in, like, grade eight. And now I'm going into my second year of university, so it's been a fucking while. So it's just nice to actually somewhat get to talk to him, you know? Interesting. Jesse, are you a community fan? No, I haven't. I've watched a few episodes, but like I haven't sat down and watched like a whole season or so of them. Like, would you say that based? Would you say that based on that, it's kind of like that's an overhyped show on Anthony's standpoint that you just don't care about? <laughs> I just like to bug Anthony about all the stuff he does, but you it could what? be I an overhyped show. Honestly, you never know. I think you should would... watch season two, and it's like episode fourteen. I think it's called advanced dungeons and dragons that's probably the best episode of the entire show well i, I want really you to like watch breaking bad one. again well fuck i've tried three times it's not <laughs> happening there it is see that's why jesse should have been on here um yeah because anthony used breaking bad last week mm-hmm. uh yeah. see for me i think just like season one to four it's like any episode in community but i liked the goodfellas episode with the i think it was the fries or something at the cafeteria Oh, yeah, you don't take them. Wait, no, that was a different. Oh, the chicken fingers. The chicken fingers. That's what it was. I was a big fan of that one. Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of shows, September 4th, 2020 official, The Boys. Oh, season I just two. saw that. I can't wait. <laughs> that one's good. Jesse, it was supposed to come out in boys? July, though. It was supposed to come out next month. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, have you watched The Boys? I have not. I'm actually notorious for not watching really any shows. Like, okay. okay. Anyone at work or anyone that comes in is like, have you watched this? Have you seen that? No. Like, as I tell people, I'd rather watch, like, say, or play, like, four hours of games instead of watching four hours of TV. Interesting. Like, I haven't decided which one I prefer. Because Soph left yesterday to go to her sister's, and I ended up playing four to five hours of Last of Us 2 instead of just sitting there watching TV. So, I... I think when it comes down to it i would much rather watch tv with people and then play video games on my own depends and, on the um, a lot of people like that vas you're on the same boat or the same that depends on the game it depends on the game like you kind of want to be in the zone for your own stuff but there's other games you'd like to be in the same room or or even playing with another like a cooperative game even if it's mm-hmm. uh through like 
just online meeting online kind of thing and playing it through together but you know obviously there's some games like you get you play a fifa game you play like a cod you can play those with people too those get fun too and get a little rowdy as well so gotta depend the game gotta depend the mood for sure anthony oh i'm in like jesse knows this i'm i rarely play my ps4 i usually just watch netflix or right now i'm watching it's always sunny in philadelphia Mm. and i started uh right before next baptism last week so i started on saturday and on friday now i'm halfway through season seven oh Mm. i want season eight now fuck i watched a lot today jesus well you got a lot to watch anyway it's almost like what Season it's 15, 15 seasons. Yeah, there you go. It's so good. <laughs> oh my god. So I, of what, sorry? Uh it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. The Dayman song has been stuck in my head ever since I watched that episode. <laughs> That's one of those shows I've been I've keep seeing pop up. I'm like, I don't know why I never got into it, but I've been told it's one of those you you that you have well, to get into. I read a review on it and they said like this is just Seinfeld on crack and I like Seinfeld. I'm still not done Seinfeld, but I'm like I like Seinfeld. Like, I wonder what it's like on crack. And it's such a good analogy for the show. It is about nothing, but the shit well, they that's... do is just so much, so fucked up. Interesting. Okay, well, looks like I have to get on a It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I realize that, like, out of all the shows that we have been mentioning, especially this year, and especially during COVID, of, like, new shows coming up that I was excited from, like, Snowpiercer. Um, I think Tiger King was, like, the only one I ended up watching. But, like, there's three or four other shows and movies. I still haven't seen fucking Parasite, and I think we were talking about that, like, two months ago. Like, I've got a whole drive full of movies to watch, and all I've been doing is just, like, I'm still on New Girl right now after just finishing Modern Family. So I think I'm just on this thing of, like, I prefer to just find something that's going to last a while, like a TV show, and maybe one that i've somewhat semi seen and then actually go through the whole thing and stick to it i'm not jumping around even though in terms of video games i've got like seven and like on the go Mm -hmm. um okay last couple things joel schumacher Mm -hmm. passes away now for those of you don't know joel schumacher you should know him for more than batman and robin and batman forever you really should um specifically there are three movies uh they are movies that i have not seen but i know that they're revered and everyone's saying that joel schumacher killed batman because of batman and robin yes it was a dumpster fire and same with batman forever was kind of a dumpster fire but not as bad but he is a he was a a really big director for a very long time and he was actually one of the first openly gay directors in hollywood as well um but three of the movies that i have now on my list are a time to kill falling down and the lost boys which i believe the lost boys is like his best one that most people that i've seen a lot of people talk about it's like a horror comedy and a lot of people are super into it it's like vampires, I the like Lost biker Boys, vampires and stuff. But like yep. i was looking at his list of movies and I'm like okay the lost boys like i i've heard of this a lot so like Mm-hmm. He also yeah, did so phone that was booth. pretty crazy. What did he do? He did, uh, you know what? I haven't seen phone book phone, phone booth for a while, but yes, he did. It's honestly one of my favorites that he's done. I don't know what really. It, but yeah, I really love phone booth. Something about it was just like I've watched it a few times over. What's it about? This guy basically <laughs> Colin Farrell. Mm-hmm. Um, he basically gets uh, blackmailed into staying into this phone booth. And it's almost like so, sort of like Saw, the guy who's calling mm-hmm. him trying to teach him a lesson. And he's stuck in this phone booth the whole time. And he's like blackmailing him and causing like it becomes a whole hostage thing. Like cops are around it. It's it's worth the watch. It's really good. I like oh, it. he wasn't a gentleman. That's why he looks so familiar. Mm-hmm. No. Colin Farrell. Oh, you mean Colin Farrell? Yeah. yeah. yeah Colin yeah, yeah, Farrell. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I believe he also... Uh, Joel Schumacher also did some episodes of TV. House oh, of there Cards. was a popular one he did recently. Yes, House of Cards. He did uh, mm-hmm. one of the episodes on there. Um, which, if you haven't seen House of Cards, I know Kevin Spacey is kind of a huge, huge fucking creeper. Mm-hmm. But that first season of House of Cards, I would highly recommend going back and watching it. It is pretty outstanding. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I know, and Flatliners was another one. It was actually one of those cult classic movies. 
um, literally about people that are that go under and flatline and then come mm-hmm. back to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. Pretty they interesting concept. Remake, and they actually. redid it. Yeah. Yeah, they did with Ellen Page, and I forget who else was in there. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, Joel Schumacher, it's crazy, and I, and it's kind of one of those names in Hollywood that everyone jokes around about because of Batman and Robin. And he even issued an apology on the DVD, and he's like, "I didn't mean to offend anybody," and anything like that. And I know usually, like, it's when people pass away that we end up as a society being like, "No, this person isn't that bad," because you know it was just a movie like i don't understand like all of that stuff uh and we're all at fault for that so i just hope that more people less people think of him for batman and robin and those ones and more people think of him for his other work that are like made him such a big director in in hollywood uh and lastly this is actually one that i prefer and that were my favorite news of the week michael keaton Mm -hmm. reportedly coming back to play bruce wayne and is that in the Ezra Miller flashpoint, if yes. I'm not mistaken? Him and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Mm-hmm. Told you the Crazy. Batverse, you guys. It's coming. The Batverse. Crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, after oh, that. Oh, man. And it was so funny because Anthony. Yeah, but Anthony, you even mentioned last time, you're like, you know, Michael Keaton won. That one's like me and my brother's era, which it wasn't. Mm-hmm. But it was more a, uh, Nick's era. And yeah, what a movie. Mm -hmm. still to this day what a movie the one shitty thing though about this like not about the casting look it's not like i'm not knocking michael keaton but it's also like in the flashpoint like you know storyline with jeffrey dean morgan playing thomas wayne as batman he writes a letter to bruce wayne like basically saying because like in this timeline bruce wayne died in the alley not his parents so he writes a letter to his you know dead son in the different universe and, you know, Batman reads the letter and he starts crying and then he's like, you're one hell of a messenger, Flash. And it's like such a cool moment. But now it, it just would have been better with Ben Affleck because that's you know, the Batman in this universe. And it might just be kind of like, I'm sure if they connect it to Michael Keaton's old movies, it'd be pretty cool. But I don't know if it'd be the same effect. Interesting. Jesse, any thoughts on this? Well, I was like looking at it today and a lot of people are worried with him going to the like flash universe or whatever it was that will he be able to be vulture and spider-man so i was trying to read up for people like i know he plays both but like how would that really affect him if he'd be able to film both oh he can because jk simmons did commissioner gordon and justice league and he was also Mm -hmm. in a sony movie homecoming or not homecoming far from home so i think he should be good but i was looking at it and there's a few articles where it's like what are they gonna do and i'm like "I, i don't see what's the problem with it I think what it is is people just finding a reason to write about something. Yeah. Like someone writing like, oh, what are they going to do? They're going to cast a guy in another movie. It's not the same person. He's an actor and he's going to play different roles. Like it's Thanos and it's Cable. Yeah. But it's still, you know, it doesn't matter because one would not be contractually obligated. Like it'd be the big question is if, they had Captain America. Like, if Chris Evans was Captain America and Batman, that's a question. <laughs> like, if that actually happened, if we lived in a world where that actually was a thing that was going to happen, then it's like, what are they going to do? Like, are we going to have an identity crisis or anything of that kind? Well, I think it's like, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure it's illegal to have, like, a do not compete clause, like, with your competitors. And, like, I don't think... on the contract. Yeah, but I even think, like, if there is a contract, and if that... Because I was watching a show about this, and, like, he got this guy lost a case because that wasn't illegal like that's not a law you can enforce so if it was in a contract but if a contract has something illegal it's not an actually valid contract right but i it i mean by illegal i don't think any of that those like i don't think illegal in terms of like the cops are going to show up and take you to jail it all depends on what's allowed in the stipulations of the contracts themselves Right. And breaking that contract, I believe, is illegal. That's an offense. But I, I'm but again, I, that's if they said that there is some le- like legal rules about it, that it's illegal, then I, it all sounds to me like it's just whatever contractual obligations there are to one party or the other. Right. Well, at the end of the day, it's a DC movie, so there's got to be clickbait everywhere. <laughs> exactly. They got to find something. Um. Okay. Well, that's all I got. 
Um, I think that's all I got. Cuphead trailer. There was a thing I put up. That looked pretty cool. Does um, it actually look like a game? I didn't check that out. That was finishing up a Yeah, work. it looks Ooh. pretty. Yeah, it looks exactly like the game. Margot Wa- Robbie is hired on for the Pirates of the Caribbean movie that's in the works, mm-hmm. which is okay. That's that's. I mean, she's a phenomenal actress, so that's cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it. That is all I have. What about you guys? I have nothing else. Nothing for me. Yeah, nothing. Bass, for me. Nothing. Jesse, anything else? Nothing really. You just remember to e transfer right. that money. For what? Yeah. For letting you come on the show. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, okay. There won't be PS5 with your name on it. Oh, by the Maybe way. Maybe set aside, but. Is that. A... Question. Did the PS5 end up get coming out on pre order or any pricing on your end? No, not yet. What are, we're telling people is you can go to our site to put your email in, but I already feel like I'm going to know like a few days in advance. So Okay. Maybe someone's going to get a message, or maybe multiple people are going to get messages, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that sounds good. I like that. That is one of the eight reasons why we brought you on this show. <laughs> the main one is because we've probably mentioned you on this show for the past three years. So it's this, was about the big, time. this was the end game payoff for our show. Bring Jesse. Yeah, on. there you go. It was only one other review that you came on. Yes. One other review yeah, the in this episode. Oh, well, that was a long yeah. time ago. That was. And it's still up on the channel, mm-hmm. which the channel is still going to be going on. The Instagram is still going to be going on. So you go to the F Word podcast on Instagram. Find us there. Uh, I think. Are you still posting facts, Anthony? Or are you taking a hiatus on that for a little bit? I'm, I'm taking sure. a hiatus, but like I'll be back to it eventually. It's just, just when I was finishing up university, yeah. that was like, I wasn't doing anything. No, it's all good. Um, and then, yeah, the YouTube channel is still going to be there. So there's a lot of second and third seasons of shows that I originally reviewed that I'm noticing people are going back to. So you can always take a look at those. Um, and then that's it. Episode 98 in the books. Two more left. Now, episode 99 and 100 is, is going to be a two-parter. So we are going to be recording an extra long episode, and it'll be set up in two parts. Uh, mostly because we've got a lot of ground to cover and um, unfortunately our schedules are not going to work out for the week after so Mm -hmm. it works out perfectly that we can do one long episode and then release it as two um, because it's going to be more of like a less obviously no news or anything but more so of just whatever the hell we want and we are each going to be uh, myself Anthony and Vass are each going to be pitching a movie, TV show, or game, or something of the like, we've put it all together, each of us at different levels, which actors, writers, directors, whatever levels we're going to do, and we're going to pitch it. After all these years of talking about movies and TV and games, we're actually going to you know, put something together and see if our ideas are stupid, which will then just drive to the point that we're just a couple of assholes with some microphones. And uh, that's going to be part one most likely of episode 99 but uh this was episode 98 thank you so much for tuning in i'm g i'm anthony i'm bass and i'm jesse and we are out (laughs) 